So, hello guys, welcome to Sync English. So today we are going to, you know, deal with the scope of social psychology. Previously we have seen, uh, you know, nature of social psychology. So today we will uh, speak about, uh, we will discuss about scope of social psychology. So what is, what is the scope for that matter? You know, here we will be dealing with, uh, you know, social psychology, which actually attempts to understand the relation between, you know, minds, groups and behaviors. We already knew that, uh, you know, social psychology deals with uh, the man and the environment, right? So here, the man and environment or the mind groups, behaviors can be actually dealt by following three ways. So one is, you know, one, it actually tries to see how thoughts, feelings, behaviors of an individual will be influenced by the actual or imagined uh, presence of others or implied presence of others. For example, it tries to understand the influence that individual perceptions and behaviors have upon the behavior of groups. So how my individual perception is affecting the group's behavior or group's perception or group's behaviors. So it can ask uh, multiple questions like uh, how does the group impact the individual and how does the individual operate within the social group settings. So it, it's always like uh, if, if I'm here and uh, there are groups, so how this individual is actually interacting or influencing or how within the social setting, the individual is actually being there. So individual perspective is very, very important for social psychology, especially when, uh, you know, scope is concerned, we try to understand, uh, deal with uh, all these aspects. So, and the second is that it tries to understand, social psychology tries to understand the influence that individual perceptions and behaviors have upon behaviors of groups. As just now I mentioned that how these individual perceptions and behaviors will have impact on uh, behaviors of groups is what makes, uh, you know, social psychology is more uh, authentic or, uh, you know, more understandable. So, for example, it actually can include uh, looking at things like group productivity in workplace or uh, certain group decisions that were made. So, if within a group, if they are coming up with one decision, it means that individual also is part of that particular group and that individual perception affects or impacts how actually, you know, this group is actually deciding upon something. So even it asks questions like, what are the reasons behind conformity, diversity and deviance? So whether we conform to others or we are diverse from others or we deviate, from other series, what also can be addressed by the study of the social psychology. And last but not least, uh, thirdly, and finally, the social psychology tries to understand the influence that individual, you know, uh, you know, the behaviors as, as an entity itself. So groups themselves as behavioral entities, for example, there is group K, group B, group C, group D, group E and all. So these groups themselves acts as an behavioral entities and in relationship where two other groups, right? One or the other groups and it has an influence over one group. So A has influence on B as influence on C as influence on A as influence on D as influence on B. So their groups, itself themselves acts as one of the you know uh, you know entities behavioral entities and then we can study the you know, uh, you know the behavior of the groups as well 
and it asks questions like what makes some groups hostile to one another and others neutral or civil. So, so if you see Avengers, right? In Avengers, civil war is there. So civil war is something which comes within two groups. So within one group is split into two groups with different ideology and then they fight with each other. It means that how these groups are actually working as an entities is also can be understand by studying social psychology. And of course, few European books, and if you see European textbooks where they have given, uh, they went on to the extent in the fourth level, the fourth level called ideological level, it which it studies societal, social construct or factors or force also when European books are concerned. So this is about the source scope of social psychology, where um, next part uh, you know, we will be dealing with the uh, you know history of the uh, social psychology. So history of social psychology, what it deals, everything we will be discussing in coming part. Yeah. So. Welcome to the next part that is history of social psychology. So here, if you see, if you wanted to understand psycho social psychology, we need to, you know, dig into the, you know, historical origins, use, you know, more of an, uh, you know, contribution to understand the social psychology, where we can get a distinct, uh, clear, uh, clear cut or distinct uh, idea of what is actually social uh, social psychology, or what are the preconditions uh, in which you know social psychology has you know uh, developed in the same level. How exactly the other uh, you know science uh, disciplines have been developed? So these ideas and uh, everything can be understood by by looking at the history of the uh, social psychology, where the social, social psychological ideas originally took shape within the realm of philosophy first. And once the philosophical ideology was developed later, it was branched off from the system of psychological knowledge. So here we will be discussing uh, this uh, history of social psychology with uh, two stages where first stage is about the total social thought before the evident of uh, advent of uh, social science and then the development of social psychology itself so first first is about uh, you know social thought stage one the social thought before the advent of social studies or social sciences so there were, uh, you know, two two earlier forms of social thought over the centuries, where uh, we have got one is uh, uh, Platonic, or uh, another one is uh, Aristotelian Aristotelian uh, thought school of thought, where here Platonic where uh, states that you know the primacy of state over the individual who had be who had to be educated to become truly social. It means it is social centered approach uh, type of an, uh, you know, thought in which Aristotelian uh, thought suggests that human being is social by nature and nature can be trusted to enable individuals to live together and to enter personal relationship with uh, you know, ships from which families, tribes, ultimately the state will naturally develop. So it is something an individual centered approach. So these two are uh, the primus, uh, you know, primary, you know, ideas that were put, uh, you know, in a historical uh, uh, way back. And when the social psychology is developing and in modern times, these two tradition of school of social thoughts have been known as a social centered approach and individual centered approach. So social centered approach emphasizes 
the determining function of social structures like systems, institutions, groups, etc. So it means more of a state is more uh, prominent here than the individual. State is more powerful, right? For a, for, a, for uh, in which the determining function of social structures. So individual experience and behavior is actually depending upon the social structures like systems or institutions or laws or whatever it is and according to individual centered approach the social systems are set applicable in nature in terms of individual processes and functions it means that according to even a german philosopher hegel where he, uh, he stated that the state is not only the ultimate form of society, but it's an incarnation of the objective social mind of which individual minds are active participants. So here state is something which is secondary, but participants within the state are more active individuals. So state alone is not an ultimate supremacy or ultimate uh, form of society but actually individuals are. So this is what, uh, uh, you know, the notion of group mind uh, was derived from the Hegel supra individual nature. So these are the two, you know, social thought before uh, advent of social science. And there are other, uh, you know, uh, schools of thoughts were uh, given put forth here, hedonism, hedonism which is which states that uh, people act in order to secure and maintain pleasure and to avoid and reduce pain so here we are defining uh, how you know individuals are being interacting with other individuals and other groups or within the society framework right? or whether the society is influencing the individual or individual is influencing the society so either it is uh, you know, social centered uh, approach or person centered approach, individual centered approach. Here we have a few more uh, uh, thoughts uh, we have here, right? Social thoughts. So, hedonism states that people act in order to secure and maintain pleasure. So, to avoid uh, uh, the pain and uh, punishment so they actually act in a such a way that you know within a secure format so utilitarianism so what it suggests is that it's a pursuit of the greatest happiness of the greatest number so what greatest number of us uh, happen to be happy you know happy so that is what we are pursuing that is utilitarianism and we have uh, Thomas Hobbes and Michael Lee's concept of social power, which social influence or social power found its proper framework of reference in the field theory and social exchange theory. So we'll be talking about different theories also, field theory, social exchange theory in coming uh, uh, parts. But right now, just focus on uh, the timeline and if you see that uh, how the you know social centered approach is, is uh, different from individual centered approach and how these different uh, social thoughts were emerged and uh, Levinian field theory is talk, talks about power became the term for the potential to influence others while control and influence refer to power of action so here we are talking about power in terms of power of action as well. So these are all comes under stage one, where stage two speaks about, you know, how it's a process in which branching off from the psychology as a separate discipline, where there are uh, three important, uh, you know, movements are uh, to be understood actually is the requirement concerning the solution of social psychological problems which actually arose in various related sciences so when the science when this you know uh, when the other other branches of sciences are actually emerging 
even uh, there were uh, sort of psychological problems for errors and that needs to be addressed so this branching off has got three important moments so one is that the processes involved in separation of social psychological problems within two parent disciplines one is psychology and sociology so this the social psychological problems were actually differentiated from these two parent uh, you know subjects disciplines one is psychology and sociology and last but not least is the last uh, moment is that finally the description of first forms of independent social psychological knowledge so there comes once the psychology and uh, sociology you know you know this the socio psychological uh, problems were actually separated from these two parent disciplines then the independent socio psychological knowledge was emerged so this is the second stage in which development of socio psychology took place so these are the three points which can be asked in correct or incorrect statement also yeah so once go through the statements now in relationship to social psychology the, there are certain theories which emerged uh, you know in relation to uh, social psychology for example psychoanalytic and the cognitive behavioristic uh, theories this were uh, emerged uh, Uh, to actually, you know, suggesting that individual in society and contributions to social psychology. So there are uh, certain theories which were uh, which which uh, which I am going to discuss in uh, next parts. So those includes uh, people psychology, mass psychology, and theory of instincts of social behavior. So. once we once we discuss about theories it would be more evident and more clear about uh, you know what exactly we are going to uh, you know important areas of the social psychology itself so especially these theories are concerned these theories are very important and uh, that needs to be addressed in a separate part so these are the trends major trends happen in the periods uh, early years mcdougalls the youth and maturing field so these are the few uh, you know current trends so current trends what we follow is evolutionary social psychology where we believe in the changing world technology and human social behavior neurocognitive perspective on social behavior so here i put forth the, the early theories to current trends clearly here so you can uh, pause the video and uh, have a look at it so it starts with uh, floyd elport's uh, you know theory of uh, you know social psychology that uh, you know what early uh, early years what were the major trends right leadership social norms social facilitation effect right and experimentation so were followed were given here and maturing phase and 90s 1990s and beyond and finally current trends so i hope uh, this video gives you an ample uh, amount of uh, insight into the social scope of the social psychology and history of the social psychology and we will be dealing with uh, theories in the next part and then we will enter into the crux of the social psychology thank you